What's the possible benefit of having a square egg? Come on, baby, 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven. Craps. I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for 40 years. I'm gonna test some as seen on TV gadgets and see if I can find a way to make them better. I would make this fold that way. There is a pin or something coming up on the side that meshes with something on this side. This plunger would come down and create that divot that's gonna be used to fill. These are the products I am going to test. Mr. Tenderizer, Curler Dog Hot Dog Spiraler, Egg Cuber, Stuff's Burger Press, Magic Bristle Gloves. Mr. Tenderizer. Its purpose in life is to tenderize any cut of meat with a turn of the handle. Let's see how effective it is. So after you assemble Mr. Tenderizer, you then want to stabilize it with the clamps that come with it. Typically, you would hang this off the edge of a countertop. In this case, I'm using a couple of cutting boards. There are two square holes here that I'm gonna use for the clamp. First one and then the second one. I've got a chicken cutlet here and I'm gonna feed it through the rollers and we'll see how it goes. You don't want to get your finger too close to that. And I've been through once, and I would think once would do it. Feeding the chicken and turning the crank was pretty effortless. So how did it work? Great. Let's see how Mr. Tenderizer compares to a standard meat mallet. I gotta say, that was a lot more fun. And I think it did as good a job, if not better, than Mr. Tenderizer. This one is the result of the mallet. It seems obvious that the mallet is a lot more effective than Mr. Tenderizer. Time to test it. I'm gonna try Mr. Tenderizer first. Let's see if I can tell the difference. The difference is subtle, but I can definitely tell that the mallet was more effective at tenderizing the chicken. It could be because it's thinner. Once again, I think the mallet is the way to go. You can just hammer away forever, and it's a lot more fun and a lot more effective. In terms of effectiveness on a one to five scale, I would give Mr. Tenderizer a two. It seems a bit limited in the amount of tenderizing and flattening that you could do, partly because this is based on the flexibility of these rubber O-rings. Now I'm going to try the left-handed oil test. By making my non-dominant hand slippery, it's gonna simulate what it may be like for someone who may have some dexterity problems. This will also highlight any areas for improvement in design. And I'm gonna start by assembling the clamps. We are on the left-hand side of the cutting board because I'll be using my left hand. You notice that the plate that comes with Mr. Tenderizer is slipping a bit. I would also wanna feed this through a couple of times because I wasn't that thrilled with the way that it was tenderizing before. In terms of usability, I would give it a five out of five. Once assembled, it's relatively easy to crank. I'm not sure it's that effective. Let's talk about a redesign. One very obvious one that I'll start with is design this tray so that it sits more securely on the base because once the meat was coming out, the tray was sliding with it. And that's just a matter of putting a shape here that's gonna sit on these legs. So that's really simple and rather low tech. I think I would make this foldable so it's easier to store. Figure out a way to make these legs hinged, but I would make this fold that way. And I think it's still rather large, but at least it's rather skinny when you store it away. The amount of pressure is based on these O-rings. By O-ring, what I mean is, this is just a simple ring in the shape of an O. You can find these in hardware stores. And because it is a single O-ring, the pressure being applied to the meat is based on the elasticity of that O-ring or the thickness of it. So I would put on either side maybe two to double the pressure or three to triple the pressure. All it means is extending this out a bit. Again, there's no problem cranking it, so I think you can easily handle three times the pressure, and I think it would flatten the chicken or the meat that much more effectively. Once you set this up for the counter, I would assume you're gonna use the same counter all the time. There are other ways to clamp something to a counter. You can see a lot of clamps in hardware stores, etc., where it's more of a lever. So once you set the depth, clamping would require just flipping a lever. So if there was a lever mechanism here that just flipped down to clamp this in place, it would be a quick clamp to the countertop and quick dismount from the countertop. In terms of a buy rating, I would give Mr. Tenderizer a one. I think you'd be a lot happier with a mallet. I have here the Mr. Tenderizer warranty card. This warranty does not cover the O-rings or the clamping device or any damage caused by act of God. Whoa.
Curl a dog. Its purpose in life is to spiralize a hot dog so you can cook it more effectively and also stuff it with things. Doesn't that look delicious? I'm gonna place the skewer through the hot dog. It's relatively straight. Let's try it that way. Clamp down, open up, and see what we got. We have a multi-cut hot dog. In terms of what it promised to do, I'd say it did it. Let's grill these guys up. I'm back from the grill and look what I got. Spiralized, perfectly cooked hot dogs. Because we're spiralized, I'm getting more mustard than normal. It makes me a happy camper. Hot dog in, skewer out, man bites dog. It's good. You can stuff it with mustard, relish, cheese, anything but ketchup. If you don't agree with that, that's why we have a comment section. Let's see how the curler dog compares to a regular old paring knife. The knife actually was a little more fun. I think my knife technique could use a little work, but I think it was just as effective and probably less to clean up. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the curler dog a five out of five. I think it did what it's promised to do. It's time for the left-handed oil test. In some cases, the action is so simple that it's not gonna make a huge difference. Press lefty, I think that's far enough to spiralize the hot dog and I'd say it did. No big problem, lefty or righty, pretty much equal amount of effort. So in terms of usability, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. It works well, I'm a little concerned about cleanup. Let's talk about a redesign. The main change I would make on this is rethink the hinge. I'm a little concerned about cleanup. I, one thing I would try is a hinge that disassembles. If we have a pin here and it only stays together closed when you start to close it, but I think it would be easier to clean up to have these pieces come apart. Another thing I would try, and maybe I would try this first, instead of hinging at all, is to have the top piece just telescope on top of the other one. I just exaggerate the size here. And the bottom piece looks like this, and that's where the well is to fit the hot dog. I think if there was a way to just mate these so that there is a wall or a pin or something coming up on the side that meshes with something on this side, maybe just a sleeve. What that means is the action would be straight down. There is probably a way once this is disassembled to invert this so those two pieces snap together save a little bit of space. And the advantage of this is with the hot dog in the middle, you get more of an even cut coming straight down on it than the hinge cut. In terms of a buy rating, I would give Curler Dog a three and a half out of five. I think it works, it's fun to use, but it's got some stiff competition from just using a knife. Ketchup, five out of five. Ketchup on a hot dog, one. Egg, Cuber. Its purpose in life is to take your egg-shaped hard-boiled egg and turn it into a cube. Why? Let's see how effective it is. We have an already peeled hard boiled egg. Place the egg, place the plunger, put on the lid and start squeezing. And we have what pretty much looks like a cubed egg. Question now is how long does it need to sit? So let's give it a few minutes and see what happens. This has been in the fridge now for about 20 minutes. Let's see what we have. And we have an even more square egg than we had before. This egg will not be rolling off your table or rolling anywhere. So I've gotta say, normally we would do some sort of control test, compare this with something else, but I'm not sure I have a good way to make a square egg aside from the egg cuber. So what's the possible benefit of having a square egg? It's gonna be a lot more efficient storage-wise. Let's see what kind of space it can save. I've got four cubed eggs, four regular hard boiled eggs, two identical plastic containers. Let's start with the round eggs. Two, three, four. Not quite, it's gonna take some persuasion. Let's try the cubed eggs. Two, three, four. Oh yeah, room to spare. The space saving winner are the square hard boiled eggs. Hosting well-equipped is a very odd job. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the egg cuber a five out of five. If you're tired of egg-shaped eggs, this is the thing you need. Let's test its usability. I'm gonna try the left-handed oil test to see if any improvements are going to reveal themselves. I have a sense that this is gonna be a little too round and a little too smooth to operate. Pinching is a little bit difficult for some people and for others it's just a little bit annoying to go in here and get this out. Let's insert the egg, insert the plunger, cap back on, 
and there's there's nothing really I'm not screwing this I don't know if you could see that but I'm going like that and I'd really have to squeeze pretty hard to get this thing to squeeze the egg down okay it's been 20 minutes my hands are still oily it is time to release the prisoner again taking a little more squeezing than I would want because my hands are slippery I have to now remove the plunger that came out okay push down from the bottom I could do that lefty or righty and I have a very square hard-boiled egg. In terms of usability, I would give this device a three out of five. I think there's room for improvement, and we'll get to that when we get to the redesign. Six. So one thing obvious to focus on is the cap. I think it's a little too slippery, a little too round. It would be a minor improvement, not a major improvement, but I think I would at least give this a little bit of shape to it. And this comes up a lot. Round shapes that have to be twisted shouldn't be perfectly round because what that means is you're gonna to have to squeeze that much harder to compensate the mechanical advantage you would have from fingers fitting into a groove with friction. Another way to do this would just be to give this, instead of being perfectly round, make it a very soft square. Now, this is the piece that fits down on the bottom. When your egg is done, you can push up on that and release the egg. I think what we can do on this piece is just add a little bit of shape or thickness to it. So I think what I would do is extend this to be just a little bit of a plug, even if it just does that. Which means the way this would look is, hopefully you get the idea, is it'll look a little bit like that. I would give this a logo on every piece so that every piece is identifiable. They could get lost or separated pretty easily. In terms of a buy rating, I would give this a three out of five. I think its benefit depends on your creativity, what you would possibly do with the square egg. Just not something that you may find yourself using on a daily basis. Let's say you are the type of person who wants to make square eggs every day. Don't ever change. Stuff's Burger Press. It is designed to help you stuff your burger with whatever you want to stuff it with. Let's see how effective it is. There are a couple of steps to this. This has a couple of different settings. I have some Beyond Meat here. I'm going to make some Beyond Burgers. Put it down, close it up, and press. And what I think I've just done is flatten out the burger. So I'm going to turn this just a little bit counterclockwise to make the divot. That will allow me to press down further in the burger so that it can be filled. And yeah, pretty much I do. Well, it's a little stuck to the sides. Okay, well, I have a bit of a divot there, but you know, I feel like I'm obligated to go in and help it out a little bit. Next step is I'm going to add some cheese. After that, I'm adding more meat for the top half. I'm going to apply that to the top. Turn it over, and again, I am going to press down. What I should have, hopefully, is a pretty tightly sealed, oh, some of the hamburger came out. Uh-oh, I'm gonna have to do a little patchwork here. But that being said, I have a hamburger patty with cheese in the middle. I'm gonna take this out along with the bottom plate. Hmm, not behaving nearly as neatly as I would want. What I would say is partial success. So that wasn't the easiest or the most straightforward process, I would think, for stuffing a burger. But we do have a burger here that is stuffed and ready for the grill. Okay, our burger has been stuffed and grilled. Let's see how it tastes. I am a fan of the idea of stuffing a burger. Stuffed burgers equals good idea. Let's see how the stuffed burger press compares with using things you already have in your kitchen, like a glass and a plate. So my hand-stuffed burger is back from the grill. Let's see how it compares. Not a hot dog, so ketchup is okay. So compared to the stuffed burger press, I think my handmade stuffed burger seems to be a little more structurally sound. Let's give it a taste. Surprisingly, they taste really similar. So between the two, I felt more confident and more in control by using my existing objects in the kitchen. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the Stuffs Burger Press a three out of five. A couple of those steps are just a little too mysterious to give it anything better than a three. Let's try this again with the left-handed oil test. I am going to start by unlatching, and that wasn't that easy. So I'm gonna fill this, with the bottom half of the burger, and the middle squeeze down and press. 
What I should have is a flattened burger patty. So I'm gonna turn this counterclockwise now and press again. That should give us the divot. This latch is a little small, with a couple of sharp edges. And now let's unlatch. I'm trying to release the burger and it is not releasing easily by itself. It came up a pretty, rather unevenly. At this point, I feel like you might as well just be making it by hand. I'm now gonna prepare the top half. Going to squash it down and give it a squeeze. It looks pretty sloppy. I've got chopped meat oozing in every crevice. I'm gonna push out the bottom. I just think this is a little more complex than it needs to be. So the end result was okay, but in terms of usability, I've gotta give this Stuff's Burger Press a one out of five. These latches and the hinge, there's just too much going on. Really a solution here is not a redesign, but rethinking this top to bottom, because this actually is a bit more complicated than it really needs to be. The first thing you could use is simply a ring that would determine the size of the patty. I would maybe consider this added silicone or for something flexible. You also should be able to get the patty out of there once it's been crushed. That would help form it. Maybe this ring wants to have, actually have a cross section like this, a little bit of a dish shape. It's an easy cleanup, could just go in the dishwasher. The next piece coming down, one of them would be the thing that creates the divot. And I think I would curve that divot piece. And so what this is, it's really the plunger part. So this plunger, this will come down. It needs to be a lot smaller. So in cross section, if this is the finished burger patty, this plunger would come down, be about that big, and create that divot that's gonna be used to fill. It could be cheese, onions, whatever you wanna fill it with. Let's make a totally separate third piece. This would be the presser piece. So this will be the width of the patty. And what this wants to do is seal the ends. So again, this would be something that will have some sort of handle where you press down on. But I think that would be it. Three simple and very importantly, intuitive pieces. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the Stuff's Burger Press a one out of five. Stop overthinking things. Magic bristle gloves. Their purpose in life is they help you scrub your dishes. Let's see how effective they are. So step one, of course, is gonna to be to get them on. And I will say they are a little tight getting on. Guess the advantage is it seals it at the wrist, so the wrist is kind of tight. So I've got a bowl and a plate both coated with mustard. I'm gonna start with the bowl. I will say the bristles seem a little too stiff for what I'm trying to do. Is as I'm scrubbing, those bristles are going to the side, to the side, to the side. They're not really secure on my fingers and I feel like I'm kind of fighting to keep them straight. Let me try this one. Again, it's a little tricky to pick things up. They are scrubbing. Do I prefer this to a brush? I don't think so. Not great. So first impression, I think I'd rather use a sponge. Let's see how the Magic Bristle Gloves compare with using regular kitchen gloves and a sponge. Between the sponge and the Magic Bristle Gloves, I would pick the sponge felt quicker and I felt a lot more in control. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the Magic Bristle Gloves a two out of five. The bristles are just too small to be effective. They're a little bit out of control when you try to use them. It's hard to pick things up. They're just not as magical as they are purported to be. Let's talk about usability. There's no reason to do a left-handed oil test on these because they are rubber gloves, but I definitely have some thoughts. If some real scrubbing is required, I don't think this would do the job. With all that in mind, in terms of usability, I would give these gloves a one out of five. They're just poorly made, disappointing. Let's try to redesign these gloves. Once putting on standard rubber gloves, try like a loofah mitt. So maybe a little more control if this loofah mitt was literally a mitt, right? So it literally had a thumb. I know they're out there for the shower or the bath. They're probably out there for the kitchen. Maybe add a bit of a rubber pad so that you can pinch something with it. You can pick up the bowl, you can pick up the plate without having it slip. But the rest of the mitt would be scrub sponge material. I think the bottom line is you'd be better off making this an entire mitt rather than just trying to control these with your fingertips. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the Magic Bristle Gloves a one out of five, and that's a little high. I think the moral of the story is don't trust anything that starts with the word magic. Want to see a magic trick? I'm gonna make these gloves disappear. Gone. A lot of these products are kind of interesting. 
and they hold some promise, but in the end, they're either underthought or overthought. And in some cases, a total washout. So before you make that TV purchase at three in the morning when everything looks great, just be a little bit cautious because they may not deliver on their promise. As always, there's a fine line between fulfilling the promise and filling up the junk drawer in your kitchen. <laughs>